All right, year 12, we are up to module six. Inquiry question four about analysis of the operation of an AC induction motor. And this is where we're starting off with here. An AC induction motor, this is our example on the left-hand side here. As you can see, it is a little kind of cage-like structure surrounded by copper wires and we had the axial rotating in this direction. Let's firstly examine the cross sections of an induction motor. So the induction motor has a couple of things. We have the gearbox, we have uh, the stator field coil, which I'll talk about later how the stator of a induction motor is different to an AC motor. We have the stator laminations, we have a cooling fan, we have a screw cage rotor, and we have the housing set. First thing, the stator is no longer a permanent magnet. Instead, in an induction motor, the stator coil, or the stator itself, is made up of electromagnets. So we have electromagnets used instead, instead of permanent magnets. And the reason being is because you can adjust the magnitude of the polarity uh, for every turn. So it's an electromagnet. The thing that's attached onto it is an iron core. Okay. So we have these couple wires that's attached onto an iron core, which induces a stronger magnetic flux. And these are powered by AC. Okay, so alternating current, they come in pairs, there'll be a north pair here, there'll be a south pair here. There might be a north pair here, and then there's a coming south pair there. The reason why this works is because this metal cage is allowed to spin freely to catch up to this changing magnetic field, which I'll explain a bit further on. Again, it's made up of a screw cage, that's the rotor, and it spins along the axial here. The stator coil is an electromagnet that has changing polarity. The reason why an induction motor can spin is based on our understanding of Lenz's law. So we're trying to create this metal cage, cause it to chase after the spinning magnetic field. Here's a little video that explains how induction motor works. Please watch it, I'll put the links down below. Okay, so an induction motor, how does it actually work? Well. Firstly, this features is the stator. They're made up of electromagnets, which causes some kind of rotating magnetic uh, field. These are wrapped around soft iron cores, so that's to increase the magnetic flux. The rotor, okay, is basically a solid metal axial, usually made out of copper or aluminium. And it's designed to conduct electricity or induce EMF to cause current to flow in the rotor and cause it to spin. You might also notice there are no brushes in an induction motor. So in the consequence of a DC or regular DC motor or AC motor is there are sparking uh, complications by having these brushes because the circuit is connecting and disconnecting. The advantage of an induction motor is the fact that you have no brushes, there's no sparking. How do we generate torque or how do we generate rotation? That is produced by having our metal cage rotor or the squirrel cage chase the spinning magnetic field. And that goes back to Lenz's law, which we'll look into soon. All right, so the stator part, let's look at the structure. So in an induction motor, you can have a one phase or three phase stator. 
one phase, three through a phase just means um, the type of magnetic pairs you have. So you have a north and south pair for one phase, and then you have uh, three pairs for three phase. And so this structure is fed through using AC current or AC supply, and it surrounds our rotor acting as the electromagnets. These coils act in pairs, so B matches up with its opposite pair, and then obviously A and C acts with its opposite pair. These produce different polarities uh, in different angles. So this could be north, and at the same time, its opposite end will be a south. As you can see here, there are variations in degrees of how strong the magnetic field is and the amount of EMF being produced uh, at a time or being induced. The next one we have is our rotor and our rotor is essentially created by having a couple of aluminium bars linked up to this little end ring here and that acts as our armature. We'll have a laminated iron, iron that acts as part of the armature to help intensify the magnetic field passing through our rotor. So this entire thing is our armature here. By having this iron, soft iron on top, that increases the magnetic flux linkage and allows for a greater um, induction of EMF. The next bit we're looking at is how does the cage chase the magnetic field? If you look at it, we have our south poles and we're saying that the electromagnet is rotating this way clockwise on our image. So if you use your right hand rule, your fingers are pointing up because that is the direction of the magnetic field. Look at the direction that's being created by the changing magnetic field. So according to this diagram, our magnetic field is going clockwise. If I use the magnets as my frame of reference, so looking at how it's moving or looking at how everything is moving relative to the magnet, my screw cage is moving anti-clockwise down this way okay so according to the screw according to the magnetic field my screw cage looks like it's moving in this direction it's moving to the left here so palm going to left magnetic field pointing up okay my thumb is pointing into me. But remember, this is Lenz's law we're looking at. It's an induced EMF current or EMF. So instead of having it point into me, I flip my hand around. My thumb is pointing into the page. So I've induced a current going into the page like so. So now it's going into the page like that. Okay, so that's the direction of the induced current. The idea is this induced current will try and create a force that pushes this magnetic um, electromagnet back to its original position. Obviously, because the electromagnet is constantly moving, that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. So the next alternative is to see what the induced current can do. And the only other option the induced current can do to oppose the change of this changing magnetic field is to follow it, is to chase after it. Okay? So, by Newton's third law of motion, the magnetic force pulls the rotor forwards. Okay? So, if we look at where our induced current is, it's going into the page. It's going into the page. Okay, our stator field is pointing up. Okay, so our B field is pointing up. 
this induced current instead is now going to be forced to move in the direction of the changing magnetic field. So it's been induced to go into the page. We already talked about why that's the case. That's the in induction bit. This is the actual motion of the cage here. So motion of the cage. And essentially, it's being forced to move in the same direction as the changing magnetic field. It's trying to chase after it. And that's essentially how an induction motor works. By having a changing magnetic field, that induces an EMF in our screw cage. That induced EMF will produce a current that is forced to move in the same direction as the changing magnetic flux or magnetic field to oppose the motion. But instead of opposing the motion and stopping the change, our rotor ends up chasing after the state of field and that's why it spins. So according to Lenz's law, a current is induced to oppose the relative motion of the bars in this case the electromagnets and stop the motion of the bars. Since this cannot be achieved, according to Noon's third law, the magnetic force pulls our rotor forwards, making our rotor chase the state of field because that's the direction um, the magnetic field is going. Okay, so it's going that way. So what we'll see is if I keep changing the direction of my rotor, so if it goes like, or if I change the direction of the stator, the electromagnets, if they're changing in this direction, I'll find that my rotor, slightly delayed after it, will be chasing it in the same direction. So it's rotating with it. That's why our induction motor doesn't need brushes. It doesn't need a current coming into it because we have changing magnetic fields so we induce a current inside the squirrel cage that causes it to spin and then we can use that spinning torque to make other objects rotate and this is kind of the types this is the type of motors that are more uh, used in industrial for industrial purposes okay it's just another video to explain through what an induction motor is so you can have a look at that anytime you want. So this is the actual motion as you can see. So you can see our polarity is changing in a clockwise direction. And you can see our uh, squirrel cage is chasing that motion. It's chasing after that. So what do we know so far? We know that according to Faraday's law, We've induced an EMF in the rotor, and that has induced a current because it's in a conductor. We know that the eddy currents or the induced current will produce a magnetic field to oppose the rotating magnetic field. The rotor will rotate in the same direction as the B field to eliminate the difference in motion between them. Okay. So it wants to eliminate any difference that's being caused by an increase of magnetic flux in the certain direction, and so it will chase after it. So what are some advantages of an induction motor? Well, our induction motor is not dependent on connections between a commutator and brush. So no brush, no sparking, no commutator, it's more cost efficient because we don't have to go about repairing that commutator every single time. So here we have it. Um, the other thing is we have the same frequency, so the speed is relatively predictable. It's self-starting, so it's really good at self-regulating its starting point. The only disadvantages you might come across is the low starting torque, so it doesn't really um, spin very fast at the start. You do require three phase AC uh, source instead of just the one phase for a DC motor. And obviously, although the speed is constant and predictable, 
there are limitations. It doesn't really exceed uh, 3000 rotations per minute if it's a 50 hertz system. And so there we have that. That's just some of the disadvantages of an induction motor, but like I said, because it's low maintenance uh, in terms of the repair, maintenance cost, uh, because it is self-starting, quite a lot of uh, industries do use induction motors for their products. And so that's essentially it to explain the function of a induction motor. So you can look back on how that differs from a simple AC conductor and how that differs with a DC motor.